Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional, Something Deeper. Thanks for joining me on this Sunday. This morning I preached on Philippians chapter 3, the beautiful passage where Paul talks about all the religious duties he had fulfilled and how that should have made him acceptable to God if any religious duty could. And then he said, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss. In fact, he said, all of that was garbage compared to one thing, knowing Christ Jesus. I believe that he doesn't mean knowing him like knowing about him. It's not that he read a book about Jesus. It was that by God's word and by God's spirit, Paul had learned who Jesus was. He had a relationship with him, and that trumped everything else in his life. It's a good thing for us to remember, because sometimes we may think, you know, I've sinned so much, I don't deserve heaven. And the truth is, we don't. But God still loves us, and by knowing Jesus, we have a relationship with our Maker through grace. Sometimes we also might think, hey, I'm pretty good, I've, I've earned heaven. And we haven't. But again, by the grace of Jesus, we can be with him for all of eternity. Let's talk about that on Something Deeper. Paul wrote four letters to the church in Corinth, and it was a church that was a troubled church. It was a center of maritime trade. Sailors aren't aren't always the best moral figures. Um, And also there was a lot of idolatry and a lot of idol worship. A lot of that was sexual as well. And so Paul had a lot of things to write about that were problems in the church. And it can be very helpful for us today because a lot of us have troubles too. A lot of us have problems before God. And he wrote in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? And then he has a representative list. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. That's a pretty expansive list. And he's saying here, if you're one of these, you can't inherit the kingdom of God. But there's hope. There's hope for all of us because all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But there's hope for all of us because in verse 11, he goes on to say, and that is what some of you were. You see, there's a solution to the sins of our past. He said, you were some of these things. Some of you were these things. But he went on to say, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Just another example in the Bible that no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, you can always come back to God. Because no matter what your sin is, and he has a whole list of them here, He said, some of you people were like that. But now, you've been washed. You were sanctified. That's a religious term. It means to be made holy. You were justified. That's a legal term. That means that you were found to be just. That you are not guilty. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. This is a beautiful expression that there is hope for us as sinners, that all we have to do is put our faith in Jesus, give our life to him and say, God, I want your way instead of mine. And by that, we can be saved. No matter what these Corinthians had been into in the past, they were washed, they were sanctified, they were justified by Jesus and by the Spirit of God. And because of that, They could have a relationship with God, both for now and for for eternity. As the 23rd Psalm, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Both for this life and the next, the best life is to follow Jesus. Put your faith in him, trust in him completely, put your confidence in him, and know that he won't let you down. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son, our only hope. But thank you, God, that this is a hope that doesn't disappoint. Thank you, Father, that you have promised grace to those who come to you. I pray, Father, everyone listening to me already has or will. In the name of Jesus, we pray this. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. Hope you have a great week coming up. And may God bless all that you do. Take care.